the jams and cocktails talk show live i am your host brad bronk and tonight folks we're revisiting a subject that affects musicians outdoor venues live music supporters and residents alike how loud should outdoor live music be well early last year we were joined by will goulet of pierce Ciderworks and the tipsy tiki in fort pierce for discussion on this very subject i don't think you were here for it ellie i think i think it was just me jordan and uh and will for that one yeah um but um so we're, we're gonna be talking about the progress that was made and the setbacks as well tonight uh, i am joined here at the legendary jnc lounge by uh the scant JNC destruction <laughs> crew tonight. But give it up for Ellie. She's here with me. And back. Yeah. <laughs> I come when no one else is here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Jordan is uh, in Jacksonville. And uh, and Derek is uh, is on assignment, as we like to call it. Uh, but uh, so we miss them. But uh, we are here to, to tell you all about this stuff tonight. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in live with us this evening on YouTube, Facebook, and Shore Life Radio. Uh, if you're not catching the show live, then I invite you to join us Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern for a live show. And you can join our conversation in the chats and comments. Wherever you're checking out the show, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like, share, and follow us on social media. You can find links to all of that on our website at jnclive.tv, short for television tv <laughs> we are watching all of the uh all of the chats and comments uh tonight uh truth be told i do have uh i do have to make a uh what's the word i'm looking for uh admit something make a confession, a confession. there we go <laughs> well, back to my ca- back to my catholic roots here uh, uh truth is well, we had a uh we had a shot of the week set up but we we Ellie we and just I, sat down. Ellie we and I just got here. Just walked in the studio, uh, and, and I'll explain why. Uh, my uh, my nephew, our nephew, um, is a member of the uh, Air Force JROTC of his high school, and uh, they were having their big award ceremony tonight. And it wasn't just it wasn't just Colby and his colleagues being honored, but uh, the one, the man, the myth, the legend, Steve the Bruce, in <laughs> fact, uh, was was awarded for uh, for just being a good good parent and hands-on building stuff for all the kids there which i think is very cool yeah he was uh jesus himself as a carpenter as a carpenter yes <laughs> my favorite part of all that was uh when the guy was uh, going on and he was like oh you know the the bringing a sense of professionalism to the woodworking i was like oh he doesn't know much does he <laughs> <laughs> has never seen him in his woodworking shop <laughs> uh, that's true like a little christmas elf he is Anyway, so that's where we were uh, right up until about uh, seven thirty-five, seven forty, yeah. <laughs> and we stepped in the in the in the room. Make a uh, longer story longer. Um, I did not have an opportunity to make the shot of the week, but we're going to present it to you anyway because it's a fun one, and maybe we'll make it on the break and we'll, and we'll film it and we'll we'll put it up for you guys to see later on. I'll fix it in post. We do have a picture though. We had time to make a picture. We did have time to make a picture of beer because we <laughs> th- this conversation is pretty long and we wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, we weren't uh, too thirsty for it. But uh we don't get to try it, but you guys get to see what it is. This is our shot of the week. Pseudo shot of the week. Oh, did you bust your teeth on that glass? <laughs> yeah. Gotta be careful of that. It's gonna get me one day. 
Have a great day. All right, friends, the JNC Shout of the Week here. As I mentioned, uh, although we're not partaking in it, uh, it is a good one. It's the duck fart. <laughs> I'm sorry, the what? The duck fart. Yep, yep, yep. You're, okay. You're <laughs> you didn't mishear me. Uh, tonight's shot of the week is the duck fart. Uh, it's a layered shot, and it uh, consists of one part Crown Royal, one part Irish Cream, one part Camorra layered into a shot glass. Oh, I bet Derek's sad he's missing that one. Oh, yeah, the coffee flavored one. all the one. stuff he <laughs> loves. That's right, that's right. And so. that's a mallard. It is a mallard. You see him tooting. I see the toot. <laughs> the duck fart, as I said, we'll, we'll film it after the show. And uh, we'll put that up there. I'll probably splice it in in post. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. But cheers to all of you tuning in with us. Cheers to you, Ellie. Thank you for being cheers here. Cheers to you. Be awful lonely here by myself. Oh, yeah. I was prepared, though. I was prepared. I was prepared. Everybody had something better to do tonight. Well, we were doing the same thing. That's so. that's true. <laughs> that's true. We did teeter on whether we were going to cancel tonight. But I thought that the subject matter was too important to just let it glaze over. Uh, considering I spent uh, quite a substantial amount of time uh, in the meeting for this. So anyway, yeah. join us for our cocktail or shot of the week each week by visiting JNC Live TV, JNC Live TV. Very important. Uh, navigating to the shot of the week page and seeing what we're planning. And you can get everything you need delivered to you by our friends at Drizzly. Drizzly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, friends. We're going to dive right into it because uh, there's quite a bit of information here. Uh, so on Monday evening, I attended, uh, amongst many, many other members of the music community and, and business owners, uh, Fort Pierce, uh, the Fort Pierce City Commissioner's Meeting, in support of live music after it was announced that they'd be deciding whether to lower the already low decibel limit of 60 decibels to a whispering 55 decibels citywide. <laughs> I'm a professional performing musician, so I say. And uh, <laughs> and while I am capable of performing at relatively low volumes, perhaps lower than maybe the average performer, because uh, uh, I don't make a lot of outward sound, uh, you know. Uh, but it, but even then, I'm sure I would exceed that level. I'm going to give you tonight some examples of things that generate 55 decibels. Might surprise you. I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, sound wave dissipation, which uh, should be considered in all of this. I've got some clips from the commissioner meeting, and we'll uh, see what they had to say before reaching their decision finally, after uh, quite quite a long, long time to sit. But before we uh, get started, I just want to let everybody know that's tuning in live. This is an open discussion, so if you got thoughts, uh, please chime in to the chats and comments. I would love that. Uh, Ellie is watching uh, some of the comments anyway. Uh, and I'm watching it, on YouTube, which is where you need the beat anyway. Yeah, really. Like, come over to YouTube. That's where everybody hangs out these days. Facebook people, we love you. Should I pull but up Facebook while I'm here? Um, I have. If you do, pull up the JNC page. Okay. Um, because I got I got the other pages up here. Gotcha. Cool. We 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 figured out the trifecta. <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, so, yes, please chime in. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you think as we uh, move through some of this information tonight. Um, my final disclaimer uh, is that I am in complete support of outdoor live music uh, and that uh, something has to give with the city ordinance because as it stands, it's ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. However, I'm also here to play a little devil's advocate uh, because the voices of the people complaining are valid as well. Uh, truth be told. So uh, let's, let's dive in, shall we? Are you ready, Ellie? Yes. And you too also, please... Uh, chime in um if, if you have any thoughts on this as well um i know you will because that's what you do i uh, just want to say hi to philip out there uh tuning in on uh on youtube i miss you man i miss i miss our mornings i don't miss getting up and doing the, the morning show uh let's just be <laughs> honest and frank uh but i do miss our chats philip in the morning i hope you're doing well my friend uh, he mentioned straight out of the gate, you can't mow a lawn under 55 decibels. He's not wrong. I feel like you can't even talk under 55 decibels. You're not wrong. And we'll get to that. But uh, I'm just going to preface here a little bit. Do ducks uh, fart 
under 55 decibels? I believe they do. I don't. But I think, <laughs> but I think ducks do. <laughs> so, all right, friends. Uh, I'm going to give you a little backstory on how this all started happening in Fort Pierce in the beginning with. Uh, about a year ago, the city of Fort Pierce began enforcing a special ordinance overlay uh, specific to a historic district in Fort Pierce known as Edgartown. All right, it's the historic district down there, uh, just outside of, of downtown between uh, Marina Boulevard and uh, or Marina Drive and Second Street, right? Where Pierce Cider is located, for those of you in the know. Um, that overlay was developed by the residents there to protect their way of life and was accepted by the city several years ago, before Pierce Cider was even in there, perhaps before uh, Sailfish even originated there. And uh, part of this section uh, in- included a... a Area specific to the property that is now Pierced Cider Work. Pierced Cider Works. Don't let me mess that up. Uh, and it laid out a list of rules for any business that perhaps opened there to follow. And uh, I'll focus on one relevant to this particular discussion, uh, which stated that only acoustic music was allowed outdoors. It was very vague, still very vague. Only acoustic music which everybody interpreted as no amplified music, no speakers, no plugging into a speaker and amplifying. If you wanted to stand out there and and play guitar and walk around the tables as a roaming troubadour, that was acceptable, according to this ordinance, right? But only till 9 o'clock. So for a time, this part of the special ordinance was left unenforced, and uh, everyone enjoyed the live music in uh, the outdoor space of Pierced Cider. Now, as things happen, and they do, the uh, music uh, became more frequent and larger groups began performing, which will inherently be louder. Larger crowds became attracted to the venue and eventually there were full-blown concerts happening at Pierce Ciderworks. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the area, have you ever been to Pierce Ciderworks, Ellie? I've driven past it, but I've never like you know, the gone there. But so yeah, yeah, you got pure ciders, pure cider right there, and you have houses. Yeah, all, it's a neighborhood, right? Yeah. So you're in a mixed use neighborhood area. There's a house directly adjacent to Pierce Ciders. Pierced. I'm just gonna say Pierced, uh, which is even hard to say. Uh, their property line. Okay, so the, the full blown concerts, hundreds of people showing up for these things. I digress. Uh, clearly, this didn't sit well with uh, some of the Edgar Town residents. So the pl- the complaints began. Can you blame them? I can't blame them. Oh. I mean, y- you know where you're living. But some of them, to you're be fair, right next to downtown. Like true, and that was an argument that a lot of people brought up in the commissioner meeting. At the same time, uh, they were there before Pierce Cider Works showed up, before these big concerts were going on. So then you move. That's your American right. I guess you're right. (laughs) But the ordinance was in place that had the rules. So this is where it becomes a problem. So the enforcement started on that overlay, which said no amplified music. Right. But it wasn't just keep it down. It was no amplified music of any kind. So This is when the disagreement had to be brought to the city because Every time anything happened at Pierce, the cops came and shut it down. Mm. There was the music, uh, for lack of better uh, description, died at Pierce Cider Works. Uh, You know, of course, they still have their bluegrass jams and they did have some acoustic things outside. They did bring music inside. But it's just, you know, it killed the vibe. Yeah. Uh, And this big thing that they were really building, there was a lot of momentum. So now... Here we are. It's been a year of back and forth and meetings and proposed compromises, which culminated in this week's commissioner's meeting that happened on Monday. Wait, so it's been a year that P- Pierce Cider hasn't had music. Has not had music. No That's music correct. at all. No music at all. Unless I wonder they, how unless that they put affected something... like, their sales. Tremendously. And yeah. it was brought up. Uh, a lot of the staff members from mm-hmm. Pierce Cider Works were yeah. at the commission meeting to talk um, and bringing that up. It was a big deal. Um, you know, uh, John Nolly there, uh, who we'll, we'll hear from him a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, definitely lost money. There was a figure. There was a number that was put out there. I just don't remember it. Now, isn't there like literally a street over? There's Sneaky Tiki, right? Tipsy Tiki is what I think you're thinking of. Sneaky Tiki's in Stewart. 
Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Whatever. There's a tiki bar there is somewhere tiki bar. in that vicinity. Right. right. But it's just outside the Edgartown district mm. area, right? What's the average age of the people in Edgartown? Over 50. 100%. Sounds about right. Don't believe that anybody <laughs> under 50 Can't they just turn there? their hearing aids off? Like, no. Nope. Come on, guys. So, um, I just want to preface this. Uh, this commission meeting was six over six hours long and uh, these items were very very near the end of um uh, of there so we got to sit and listen to all kinds of problems going on in fort pierce uh very enlightening that's information for another day <laughs> but uh, so here we are and uh three and a half hours later they decide or on the agenda we get to talk about we did, and the commissioners were very very appreciative of our patience there was a lot of people there in support. So why were there so many people there for this meeting? The question. Well, somehow in all the discussions pertaining specifically to Pierce Cider and Edgartown, someone proposed an overall lowering of the sound levels from 60 dB to 55 dB and apply it throughout the city. including at your town completely doing away with their overlay that they had their special overlay just saying citywide 55 db now ellie i'm going to give you some examples of things that are 55 decibels is one of them a cat meow <laughs> i didn't i don't have it on this list but, but i'd love to try and see um you did mention this one 55 db is a normal conversation between two people in a quiet room Quiet background music is 55 decibels. The sound of a refrigerator or air conditioning unit from a few feet away. The sound of a computer or printer in a quiet office. The hum of light traffic from a distance of about 100 feet. This was my personal favorite. The sound of leaves rustling in the wind. <laughs> literal nature <laughs> and uh and uh, last on my list here the uh sound of quiet office of a quiet office or a library so and if you out there have any other examples that you'd like to send us i'd love to read them off because 55 decibels is just barely above a whisper it's not loud it seems preposterous that a musician could uh perform at the same level as leaves rustling, mm -hmm. uh, even completely unplugged. Now, for perspective, and this is important, uh, we're, we're not talking about 55 decibels at the source. You're standing right in front of the person measuring it with the, with the equipment, right? But rather, the property line where a measurement would be taken and that ambient sound is already mitigated from the reading. But let's say, for example... The property line is 200 feet away from the source, from the guy playing the guitar, doing the show, whatever, right? Using the inverse square law, <laughs> uh, we could assume that the uh, sound source would probably have to be in and around 73 decibels to stay in code. How loud is 73 decibels? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> 73 decibels, a dishwasher running at about three to five feet away. Background noise of a uh, of a busy office. Moderate rainfall about 50 feet away. And the moderate sound from a television about six to eight feet away. A little louder than the leaves rustling, but not much. That's like quieter than my dryer running. While I'm sleeping, like <laughs> I was when I was driving to this meeting, your car was louder. <laughs> I had the radio off and all that was happening was I was driving and the air conditioning was on 85 decibels. I was about to say it's over 80 for sure. And yeah. people driving their cars hours and hours out of the mm -hmm. day. I digress. Yeah. It's also prudent to mention. Good word. Uh, that a singer, accompanied by an acoustic guitar with no amplification, produces roughly 
70 to 80 decibels. Just somebody sitting in a room playing guitar and singing out loud. Already over the limit. Already over the limit from 200 feet away at the property line. It's absurd. And to have like, I don't know if anyone, like I know you and I have heard like someone just playing guitar and singing, not amplified at all. You can't hear them 50 feet away. You can't hear them over the roar of conversation. Absolutely. In a, in not even a busy restaurant or bar, but moderately busy. What's the decibels on a, a beer being opened? Oh, we should we should measure we that. We should. <laughs> we should measure that. We'll Cuz be- that's literally what they're doing. Like like come on. Yeah. And just, you know, I mean anything. What's the decibels of the cook hitting the bell that the Oh, that bell is, you know it's intense. You know it's intense. (laughs) So the question not only is, but was on everybody's mind that showed up to this meeting, is what mathematician came up with a 55 decibel limit for the whole city? Mm. Well, I'm not going to answer it for you. Let's put his picture up now. (laughs) I'm not going to answer it for you. Because at the meeting, Commissioner Gaines uh, explained what he believes happened. And his thoughts on the amendment in general. I have a clip for that. Enjoy it. And we'll be uh, we'll be right back. This is uh, Commissioner Gaines, Fort Pierce City Commissioner. Riding the struggle bus. Maybe we'll try that again. Good God. What's the the computer? She's uh, having a little having a little trouble. (laughs) I'm still trying to work on that. Something's going on with the videos. I don't know why. But uh, here it is, Commissioner Gaines. Commissioners, I've went back and reviewed this whole process. And we started this whole process to get us here tonight about removing amplified versus acoustic Mm -hmm. in one part of the city, Egertown. That's what we were tasked to do, to go see if we're going to do acoustic to amplify, right? Out of the blue, now we're in left field talking about a citywide noise reduction, right? My suggestion, and, and they might get mad because they've been here all night, and I appreciate that. We need to go back to focus on what we started, acoustic or amplified. We have a notice. We have we have a noise audience. We have a noise audience. We have ordinance to regulate that that noise audience. (laughs) The only way it, it came lower was because during the judicial hearing or legislative hearing, somebody said 60 and 65. And I made the comment and said, well, okay, let's cut it in the middle and go 55. That's where 55 came from. So we're, so I think we need to let... I, I, let them t- okay. Yeah. I mean, because I think they've been here all night. And I, and I know I know where you're going because we're 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 all I, I want to hear what they have to say. And um, I think that uh, they've been here all night. And, and I, wait, wait, wait. I, I, no, no, no. I know you do too. I know you do too. But this for the record, I want to hear what they have to say too. But I've read the emails, mm-hmm. and I know what they want to say. Mm-hmm. They they don't want it lowered. That's exactly that's, that's what they're yeah. about to say. That's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. right. You know, and and it's the truth. None of us wanted it lowered. That's sixty decibels is quieter than moderate rainfall from fifty feet away. Yeah. So, How far in distance is Pierce Cider from the like closest house? Like, what is that distance? Well, Do we know? I'm going to tell you that the closest house is on the property line. It, it it backs up completely to the property line. So they're like there. They're in the backyard. They're in the backyard now. Okay. The music, the source of the sound, is set further back towards. The Pierce Cider building. Yeah. Now, not when they were complaining because they they have a big stage uh, set up in the in the in the 
outside space uh, that I think since they've not been able to use because uh, there's a another restriction on the amount of square footage that they're allowed to have occupied during the day, whatever. A lot of technicalities with that particular place, um, which I think requires a whole podcast on its own, the, the, right. the, the deal with uh, Edgar Town. Um, but yeah, but I would say, I would say 200 feet away would be a good estimate. 200 to, feet. 200 feet. Okay. Right? So 200 feet. That's at, a good amount. At 50, 55 decibels at 200 feet, you couldn't go over 73 decibels right. without breaking the code. Yeah. Per math, anyway. There's a million things that you, baffling things in the way. Lots of stuff can disperse a sound wave. I don't have all the science. I did not go to school for this. But like, I, I'm sorry, bro. Just get better, like, insulation in your house. Like, these houses, like that is a you problem. <laughs> these houses are over 100 years old. Ah, just move. So, so, move. Uh, so there's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, and and a lot of people aren't going to move because they, they bought money to be there specifically for those houses, to renovate those houses. Um, and particularly the woman that lives next door who was there in full force to... Uh, Speak her mind about uh, <laughs> about uh, the Edgar Town overlay, which she was a part of putting together. Mm. I so digress. she's against it. Oh yeah. Yeah. How old was she? Um, I would say she's fifty plus, maybe in her sixties. Girl, you too young to be complaining about that. I know. Before I I realized who it was, I thought this was a, a woman much much older. Not to say that there's older people that don't love music, but. To the point, to that clip, uh, clearly because it came from there and now all of a sudden they're talking about changing the noise ordinance throughout the entire city of Fort Pierce, which is huge. Yeah, you can't do that. So it all spun out into left field, as Commissioner Gaines mentioned. Yeah. And uh, some local venue owners, when they caught wind of this, were freaking out. You know, these As are, they should. These are bar and restaurant owners that yeah. that uh, have come out and said they, they, they depend heavily on local music, local entertainment to entertain their patrons, keep them around, keep them buying drinks, keep them coming back for for meals. That's a huge culture thing just in like Fort Pierce. Like 100%. So uh, this next clip I have for you guys, we're going to hear from Georgette Angelos of Chuck Seafood. We're going to hear from Rick Godby of Crocodillos, or Crocodillos, depends on your, your culture, I suppose, to the language that you speak. <laughs> Uh, crocodiles, crocodillos, uh, and John Nolly, of course, up here, cider work and uh, tipsy tiki. So, uh, here's that next clip. Check it out. Uh, George at Angelo, 1708 Rio Vista Drive. Thank you. Um, good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I was joking with someone in the back. I said, I feel like having uh, bacon from Footloose because we're fighting for music here. Um, but just to state the facts on the three minutes. This, nord- this noise ordinance is virtually impossible to meet. Uh, normal conversation is at 83.6 decibels. Be careful. Be- we have to be careful what we wish for because at Saturday morning, we have our green market, our craft market, and that exceeds the 60 decibels as it's set as right now. Um, no events could take place at the Riverwalk Center or downtown. Uh, normal traffic exceeds this decibel limit. Um, if adopted, this would uh, stop any events in the city. Um, it defeats the whole progress that I have seen happen over the last 25 to 32 years of my life. Um, I came back from Los Angeles. We have better live music here than I used to see there. Um, you can't combine <laughs> being on the water. We live in paradise. What meets that better out of all the location, Cobb's Landing. Um, I'm one of the owners of Chuck Seafood. And since I took over live music, especially in the world of COVID, people don't still, people still don't want to be inside. They want to be outside enjoying the sights, enjoying what this town is based off of, which is great history and great views and a great environment. That's what we've always been able to bring to put more of a lower decibel ordinance on this sound is is restricting all of that that we've put forth, um, not only over the last 25 years, but 50 years. Will Goulet, uh, 2305 Atlantic Beach Boulevard. I'm going to go super quick because I really appreciate everybody showing up tonight. I'm so grateful for that. Staying. Um, and stay. And stay. <laughs> that, I've been to some long ones. This was uh, this was a good one. Uh, and so I want to thank them, and I want to thank the commissioners as well because I know you're going to make the right decision tonight on this issue. My name is Rick Godby. I'm 109 Fisherman's Wharf. I'm one of the few 
small businesses that does have a live music venue. I put everything into my, that, that I have into my venue. Changing the ordinance by just five decimal ma- makes a huge difference. We won't be able to entertain our customers as well as we need to. I won't be able to employ as many people. If I have to limit my music, I won't be able to have vendors bringing me food. And, and what we're trying to limit it with a o- noise ordinance. How about marching bands at schools, football games, and cheerleaders? This is, I just don't get where we're trying to go with this. And I'm sure you don't either. But the bottom line is we're moving forward with Fort Pierce. And live music is going to be part of it. You got a lot of musicians here. You got a lot of bit. Forget about us business owners. These people are what makes a difference. And I need you guys to consider that tonight when you decide. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, John Nolly, 1207 Seaway Drive, uh, taking my Pierce Cider hat off because that's the next one that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> but on this one, uh, I guess, as you said, you know, you do know what everybody's going <laughs> to say. <laughs> yeah, we might just want to listen to them, you know, and vote the right way. Uh, d- lowering the lowering the cities overall. Uh, is pretty tough. Again, I'm at 1207 Seaway Drive on the edge, is basically across the street from me, down a little bit. So according to this, you really might want to consider raising it because even if somebody's whispering into a microphone over there and they're checking at the property line and there's traffic going by, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to flag them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah, raising it is definitely the way to go citywide. At your town, a whole different situation. But it's really, really going to be a problem for you guys to control as a whole. Yep, and uh, and he's absolutely right, you guys. Um, uh, and that's just you know hearing from some of the business owners that are scared that their business is going to be affected. Yeah, by, by five decibels, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a huge amount when you when you consider what five decibels is. And how it's dissipating as it moves out, you know. So, um, very good points there. Um, and I know Georgette kind of touched a little bit on the fact that that it's really kind of putting a damper on the culture that has been created in Fort Pierce and has directly contributed to the success of this renaissance of the city. Um, you know these these events. Uh, she brought up the farmers market and the Friday fest events. Where do yeah. you, where do you record the the decibels there? Now I guess it's a city event. They could just go and pull their own permit. Um, and if that were the case, uh, I feel like that would be a huge legal issue. Uh, if they could just go yeah. pull permits, you know, because uh, as it is in the law, you can uh, a a a place can only pull six permits. Uh, omission permits or what's the I don't know if that's the word, but um, yeah, permits to go above the the noise ordinance uh, six times a year. Well, Friday Fest happens twelve times a year, and the farmers market happens every Saturday, fifty two times a year. Yeah. So the city itself is going to lose money. They're well, going to lose money. Well, truth be told, um, these commissioners. There are no dummies. Yeah. Um, and and sitting in there for nearly six hours, uh, really, I got an opportunity to kind of see how the these the dynamic of these people work. I got to um, hear their thoughts on it, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, these aren't stupid people. They're very smart, and and I believe that they genuinely care uh, about the people of Fort Pierce. And uh, and about the people in the businesses in Fort Pierce. So I really got that impression, and uh, and I'm happy about that. I didn't see anything smug. And truth be told, they have put many, 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 many hours into this thought. While there are tons of other things going on in Fort Pierce that perhaps are more important, um, but uh, maybe less important. But many, many hours have been spent on this particular issue. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, amid these business owners. Um, they're pleased to the commission. Uh, there was more than a dozen other people. I didn't have time to put those clips together. <laughs> um, supporters of live music in Fort Pierce, and they all said their piece. There was also quite a lot of people talking about pickleball for some reason. Uh, I guess pickleball <laughs> is very loud and obnoxious. They had good points. I get it. Totally, uh, 
totally different. But it did play in to the idea that the commissioners kind of were left with. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie's over there about to spill her whole beer all over the table. You're too excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sightable girl. Um, so the big consensus was rezoning where these where these limitations are you know perhaps maybe doing the decibels 55 decibels in complete residential areas which means you can't go out on your back patio and blast music all night long until the wee hours of the morning which, which is, is fair which is fair right so but mixed use has to be something else it has to encompass pure cider that lives right next to a house but is also a business trying to be a business yeah. and entertain their guests like they're and it's not like they're the only ones in the whole area having live music causing a ruckus every other place that sells liquor or beers or cider has live music so they're if you take that away from them they're in no longer in competition with their competition yeah. they're at the end so that is a big deal I get where the residents are coming from. I understand their plight. Some of the Edgar Town residents came out in support of Pure Cider. You know, naturally they were, uh, you know, like, but, you know, maybe if we can, like, cut it off at a certain time or people aren't passing out drunk on my front lawn, you know, that would be nice, too. Mm -hmm. Listen, I get it. That's a whole other bag. Um, but they were like, we love the music. We love to go over there. We love to sit on our patio and listen to it. I could go on. There was over a dozen people that spoke uh, in support and against all of this stuff. But nobody was against or nobody was for lowering the citywide decibels down to 55. That was particularly to Pierce Cider and Edgar Town uh, was that that kind of uh, dissidence, if you will. Um, the main takeaway I got from the whole meeting was um from the uh, commissioner discussion that ensued uh, after all the, the public speaking, uh, that th this was not the revision or that th this particular revision was not well conceived, uh, and that they needed to revisit the entire ordinance as a whole. And uh, Commissioner Jeremiah Johnson even proposed raising the decibel levels in some areas. Uh, then they cast their votes to approve or deny the revision. And uh, here's what they had to say prior to that. And then, uh, and then casting the vote. I got the actual, the right video for this. Only. <laughs> Here we go. I'm not in support of the changes. I'm actually in support of making additional modifications to increase the sound levels. I think we have to be strategic about it. Uh, we, we want to be strategic about it. But at the end of the day, I've given, I don't even know how many folks I've talked to. Um, I, I can't even tell you the number. But I've talked about speed limit signs. And, and my example is, and I heard somebody talk about US-1, and, and if we were to just arbitrarily change a speed limit sign thinking that, oh, Jeremiah Johnson's going to now drive 30 because it was 40, and we reduced it to 30, so now he's an extra safe driver. I'm going to tell you, not the case. I'm a human being. I have faults. I, 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 my brain thinks about other things while driving down the road. I try not to. I make sure I'm a safe driver, but... Uh, just because somebody changed a rule without enforcement doesn't mean that everyone's going to follow the rule. This ordinance as, as drafted simply doesn't come close to addressing this problem. This needs to go away. May I make a motion that we deny, um, let's say in here ordinance 23026 restricting the noise volume citywide. Is there a second? Second. All right. Are we ready to vote? Are we ready to vote? Okay, please call the roll. Commissioner Broderick? Yes. Commissioner Gaines? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner C. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner J. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Hudson? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So there, there you have it, you guys. Um, in this particular case, I think the commissioner has made the right choice. I... Um, you know they were they were unanimous with it. Not so much when it came to Edgar Town and the overlay and the changes made to that. That's that's something for another time. Uh, maybe I'll touch on it just a little bit. But uh, as of now, live music at Fort Pierce will continue the status quo for now till the Fort Pierce commissioners uh, come up with something 
sorry, Fort Pierce City Commissioners speaking. Uh, come up with another ordinance revision. Uh, however, for poor uh, pierced cider works in Edgartown, the uh, the work is uh, still still plenty. Uh, there's still a lot to be done there. While the acoustic verbiage was uh, removed to allow amplified entertainment, that uh, 55 decibel limit was imposed on the district, uh, not aligning with the rest of the city, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, some residents, as I was talking about, uh, wanted the original ordinance to stand. And Pierce wanted the decibel level raised. In fact, neither side got what they wanted out of that. Uh, but I personally believe it's a good starting point to begin uh, rebuilding rebuilding that relationship between Pierce and the residents there uh, and the live entertainment that we've missed at Pierce. So uh, how they proceed is is incredibly important. Uh, and and I think extending an olive branch to the residents somehow, not the ones that love it, but the ones that are particularly annoyed by it, um, I think is a really good start because um, they are in close quarters and they are living there. Many of them retired. So they're there all day, every day at their house. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Totally not mentioning that uh, freight trains go by there multiple times a day right. and, and uh, exceeding 100 decibels, shaking the ground. Um, and then I can only imagine how loud it's going to be when they start uh, putting up King's Landing, uh, the huge building that's just less than a block away from the whole area. So we'll, we'll see. They just hate music. Like if you were a plast in NPR, they would be fine. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it's just not their kind of music that they like. You know, we did, ha did have a woman who, who who came up to the podium, and uh, she wasn't talking about anything here. It was in her neighborhood, and it, it was specifically to people throwing house parties or pop up parties that sometimes happen in Fort Pierce. Um, you know, playing club music in the middle of the night when she wants to put on her record player. Oh. Uh, I forget who she said specifically. I wish I had to pull that clip because she was adorable. But, you know, she's like, let me go up and down the block blasting my music and see how everybody likes it. She's like, nobody will like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just looking at the well, comments that's here. that's the problem, Glenda. <laughs> uh, Rapid Dong, nice to see you. Uh, he said he's going to have to ban Harleys too. Motorcycles. Yeah. I get freaked out and I'm playing music with my headphones in, with my in-ear monitors, and a motorcycle wow, yeah. blasts past me. It scares me. Yeah. So, like, you know, or they're right behind me and they crank up. You know, that, that's clearly above the decibels limit. You're going to stop letting motorcycles through Fort Pierce? Are you crazy? A car horn is yeah. louder. A uh, uh, perfect example. Philip said, uh, we mentioned earlier, you can't mow your grass. Yeah. And that's an extended period of time. Yeah. Sometimes in hours of people mowing their grass all day, you know, um, it, it, there's 55 decibels as a city ordinance. You couldn't cough loudly outside of your house without yeah. the cops potentially getting called on you. Now, obviously, you can't. They can't show up and measure a cough later, you know, uh, so it's really. But like it empowers the complainers to complain. Um, also, your air conditioning unit, when it kicks on outside, louder uh, than 55 decibels. Just grow up, people. Grow and up. And in many cases, the air conditioner is right on the property line. So it's just as loud standing in your yard as it is in your neighbor's. Yeah. Just so you know, uh, Philip said, Pure Cider may need to become s Lucy, sp Lucy Cider. Yeah, bring them here. Um, just to let you know, the city of Stewart, 80 decibels citywide. Does it solve all the problems? No, of course not. Did it solve the prop the immediate problems? It seems to be going okay. Was yeah. everybody happy? Of course not. Uh, Port St. Lucie, the city of Port St. Lucie is 65 decibels. Five decibels louder than Fort Pierce. You know? Is there an exception for the Midwave Florida Center that uh throws rock concerts every weekend? Yeah, right. I don't know. So a lot of work for the commissioners to do. I believe they'll do it. They have been putting in the effort, um, and they and they, uh, Commissioner Gaines took responsibility for the fifty-five number, which I thought was very big, um, and then came back and said we, we need to throw this in the trash and focus on what we were charged to do, 
The ordinance. Nobody's complaining about the original ordinance as it stands. So let's go back to that. And they did. So you guys, that's, that's the story. Of course, we're going to uh, keep you up to speed on any uh, new developments. I'd like to give a massive shout out uh, to Will Goulet for keeping us in the loop, being a huge supporter of all we do here on the Treasure Coast. Now, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we're going to get into this week's entertainment news headlines in the the, the Jordy Files, the Brady Files today. I don't know, the Brady Files. <laughs> and we're going to hear Ellie's bad bitch message. So don't go away. This is Jams and Cocktails. Uh, this one's called Shit Creek. Standing on a mountain But all I see is a black cloud hanging And all I hear is talking But all the words get blown in the wind Do they even know what go? Our bags and run Get the rest out here Run for your life Cause all they want is more No looking back Leave it all behind Pray to the good Lord Stuck up shit creek again Circus, the clowns don't seem to give a damn. Cause it's a dire situation, skeletons hiding deep in the dark. Oh, yeah. Will they ever learn to oh, stay blind? Is the green grass on the other side? Get the rest out here, run for your life. Cause all you want is more. No looking back, leave it all behind. Pray to the good Lord. We stuck up Shit Creek again. Cause all they want is more No looking back, leave it all behind Pray to the good Lord Get the rest out here, run for your life All they want is more No looking back, leave it all behind Pray to the good Lord We stuck up shit creek again All right, that was Vern Diesel there with Shit Creek. Great tune, Vern Diesel, of course, a great solo artist. Uh, he's got two bands now that he's in, Tombstone Chevy and uh, Vern Diesel and the Burning Something. I want to say Burning Bush, but I don't I don't believe that's what it is. <laughs> I'm an idiot for not, uh, not knowing what it is. Uh, but they're out there making music, and uh, God, such a talented dude. All right, guys. Um, we're back and it's, uh, time to put you in the know with this week's entertainment news. This is the Jody Files. 
Come back from the. Uh, from you the need break. to work in some like voice clips in there. Yeah, well, I, I know you have them. I know. I need to go through. I put notes, but I need to go and pull the sound bites. We have some. We have some charm. We have some good ones. <laughs> we have some good ones. All right, you guys. Uh, welcome to the Jordy Files. Jordan, of course, uh, out uh, out of town again. She has forsaken us. <sighs> she making the big bucks. Brad's gonna get to retire. I'd like to say early retirement, but look at this face. Yeah. Nothing early about it. Ooh, I'm about to cough. <laughs> Why did you announce it first? Because <laughs> I, uh, I didn't want to just, you know, I just want everybody to be in the know, especially our radio listeners. I wanted to brace you uh, for what was about to happen. Uh, tonight, you guys, we've got uh, an update on the late pop star Aaron Carter. Uh, his cause oh. of death has been announced. Um, might be exactly what you think it is. Uh, we've got another reason why Taylor Swift is a genius. And an iconic Broadway show is at its last curtain call. But uh, for ta- for for Turst, <laughs> oh, God, it really is contagious. <laughs> the Jordy Files is completely contagious, you guys. <laughs> We're going to start with our celebrity birthdays. Uh, first up, you might recognize this guy. Hayden Christensen turning 42 years old today. Oh, God. I know. Gained fame as Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader in the Star Wars Episode 2 and 3. Portrayal of Sam in life as a uh, house. Oh, Sam in life as a house? As a house? He is Sam. Life as a house. Life as a house or is? Life as a house. Okay. Clearly an interesting film. I earned him a Golden Globe, though. Uh, nomination and win it mm. for best supporting actor back in uh, 2001. He was also in what was that movie? Jumper. Oh yeah, he was in Jumper. Yeah, terrible. Terrible. I, I saw in the I saw in the theater. If that's putting age on me at all, I think but I did too. I think that was right after Star Wars. It was yeah. Uh, who was the the girl that Rachel Bilson? Yeah, they dated yeah. for a long time. Yeah, he still looks great. He, he made a re a re uh, reappearance in. Um, the Obi Wan Kenobi series, hmm. um, and he's—I mean, he looked. He was trying to still be that uh, teenage Padawan. Oh no, he's older that, now. That, that throwback, and uh, he, he looked good, but. They but he's forty-two. They didn't do any uh, de aging on him, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is which I I kind of I kind of appreciate. We don't have to de age everyone in the films. They made him look pretty young, though. It was nice to see the two of them bickering again. Uh, my favorite actor ever. Ellie. Ever. Yep. Love this actor. Not just as an actor, but as a human being. I definitely don't want to punch his smug face. Okay. Oh, God. James Franco turning 45 (laughs) years old today. Some would say he's an actor, filmmaker, author, and professor. Some say he's a creep. Oh. He won a Golden Globe Awards for Best Actor for his role uh, in James Dean and the Disaster Artist. I don't think that's one thing. I think James Dean and the disaster artist. Yeah. Uh, his roles in the Spider-Man trilogy, Oz the Great and Powerful, Pineapple Express, and and, and uh, 127 Hours brought him additional fame. Definitely not that smug face. Happy birthday, James Franco. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. Doesn't he have just like a nice little punchable face? He does. Yeah. I did hear a story. I have the inside scoop. He was in a film called Annapolis with Tyrese many, many years ago, back in the early 2000s. And uh, um, my ex-girlfriend and still good friend, Leah, was uh, an extra in that film. And she she, she gave me the tea back then. Uh, Tyrese was getting furious because James Franco, it was a boxing film. Just in case you don't know, Annapolis is a boxing film, but they were in the military. So it was military boxing. Wow. There, I don't know. I don't know what's going That's on. That's different from regular boxing. Yeah, so, so they're like, you know, throwing punches. 
James Franco doesn't know any of his choreography, keeps hitting Tyrese. So Tyrese, completely furious with the whole situation, decks him. And they had to, like, call the shot for the day. <laughs> so he does have a so punchable does, face. In fact, have a punchable face. Yeah. All right, James Franco. Uh, moving on to somebody much more lovely <laughs> and younger. Uh, turning 44 years old today, the lovely Kate Hudson. Oh, she still looks amazing. Right? As old as she gets older, though, she looks so much more like her mother. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, like, everybody loves Goldie Hawn. Um, so uh, she's, of course, the actress who became known for playing the character Penny Lane in the 2000 film Almost Famous. Can you believe that? It came out in 2000. She's also notable for starring in rom-coms such as How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. This was my love, Fern. You killed it. That's such a good movie, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, You, Me, and Dupree. Uh, her brother is Rules of Engagement star Oliver Hudson. And her mother is, of course, Goldie Hawn. Yeah. So happy birthday, Kate Hudson. 44 years old today. Uh, here's one that is bittersweet. There are a lot of double birthdays. 44, this next actor, turning 77 years old today. His career began with the cult hit Rocky Horror Picture Show. Went on to play Pennywise the Clown in uh, the film It. He also played uh, Darkness in the 1985 film Legend and appeared in the Muppet Treasure Island and Scary Movie 2. And who could forget Home Alone 2 Lost in New York? We're talking about Tim Curry. Um, of course, Tim Curry suffered a massive stroke um, years ago and has left him, uh, left him wheelchair bound. But uh, 77 years old, still kicking, still doing his thing. So happy birthday, Tim Curry. Um, legendary in my book. Uh, next up, turning 58 years old today, rap mogul, co-founded Death Row Records with Dr. Dre, Suge Knight. He looks like a Suge. That, I don't think you can say that, Brad. <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out when the ratings come in. He later founded. Uh, what is this picture, by the way? He's just on his phone. <laughs> a paparazzi got him. <laughs> you couldn't find a different <laughs> picture. I just give what they give me, man. That's what happens when you stop producing your own shows. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, it was just the first thing, first picture I saw. Anyway. Um, did you? Uh, he also founded uh, Black Capital Records. Not just regular Capitol Records. This is Black Capitol Records with a K. Capital. Oh, Capital with a K. Yeah. Capital with a capital K. Yeah. Okay. Also, I didn't know this about him, though. He played for the Los Angeles Rams before becoming a producer. And uh, did you know that his first big fortune came from the success of Vanilla Ice? Hmm. Ice, Ice, baby. Yeah, not bad. Happy birthday, Shug. <laughs> Definitely not saying it right. <laughs> um, turning 54 years old today. A lot of people turn to 50 in their 50s. Uh, she's an actress known for her roles in many successful films, including High Crimes, Divergent, and Insurgent. The role in Double Jeopardy earned her a Blockbuster Entertainment Award for Favorite Actress. And she comes from country music royalty, Ashley Judd. Mm. Turning 54. Four years old today. That's crazy. Good birthday, Ashley. And rounding out our celebrity birthdays today. Turning 53 years old today is the CEO of West Choppers or West Coast Choppers and a host of a 2009 Spike TV show. Jesse James is a dead man. Jesse James, of course, a former boyfriend of. Uh, uh, oh, God. No, I can't remember her name. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. You yeah. Got he it. cheated on her. We hate him. Boo. We love Sandra Bullock. Boo, boo. Boo. Jesse James, 53. He also dated Kat Von D. Boo. Boo. Jesse James, you look 53. And that's our celebrity birthdays. <laughs> Happy birthday. And it, it's... Ellie, you got a birthday coming up, don't you? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> not for a while. No more birthdays ever. All right, you guys are going to get into our stories here. Uh, first story of the night. 
Uh, as mentioned, they found out what killed Aaron Carter. And as I said, it's pretty close to what you might think. According to the L.A. County Coroner, the cause of death was drowning. But there were some contributing factors, including the effects of uh, <sighs> difluorethane, which is, is a that? it's a propellant in canned air and uh, alprolozolism. Mm which is a generic Xanax. The report says multiple cans of electronic dust can air were found near him oh. and that he uh, had a known history of inhalant abuse. Uh, what, what do they call that when you... Whippets? Huffing and, and whippets, and yeah. Whippets. Multiple bottles of prescription medications were also found. Uh, Aaron Carter, younger brother of uh, Backstreet Boys, Nick Carter, died last November at the age of 34, which is unbelievable to me. Uh, so young. Uh, and he was found in a bathtub at his home in Lancaster, California. So there you have it. That is, that's what did it. Uh, I remember seeing a uh, intervention episode about somebody that was addicted to doing whippets. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know how much of this was dramatized, but they would go into like a staples and clear them out of air duster. I think it was because of that episode that they started putting restrictions on how many you could buy at one time. Yeah. Um, about a commercial license of some kind, I guess. But it was really disturbing. And then when you get like super high on it, not that I'm telling any of you kids to go out there and try it. It's not worth it. It literally kills your brain. Like, yeah. Well, it kills you completely. Yeah. Uh, apparently. And it's for like, not a very long time. Like, guys, listen, weed is legal in most states. Just go and do that. Like, yeah, figure <laughs> and that out. Stay at home, watch cartoons, yeah. eat a bag of chips. Like, it's figure not that, that serious, man. It's true. It's true. What are we doing here? All right. Uh, well, there you go. Still sad. Um, troubled guy. He yep. He was struggling for a while, though. Yeah. Um, next up, T Swift. Yeah, do you want another reason why Taylor Swift is a genius? <laughs> Give it to you. We love Taylor Swift on this show. Sorry, Philip. Actually, it's always uh, Philip always says I don't have a problem with Taylor Swift. It's Pam uh, that has a problem with Taylor Swift. Well, this was a good one. She's a genius. Stars who uh, served as celebrity ambassadors for the now uh, discredited crypto exchange FTX could be on the hook legally for billions of dollars. And it turns out Taylor Swift narrowly avoided the same fate. The latest episode of the Scoop podcast. Boo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Attorney <laughs> Adam Moskowitz talks about how he's suing stars like Shaquille O'Neal, Tom Brady and Larry David in a class action lawsuit. Sue contends that by promoting FTX, the stars were promoting the sale of unregistered securities, which is illegal in the United States. Know your rights, people. Moskowitz, who's seeking $5 billion in the Ooh. lawsuit, says he doesn't understand why these stars handlers didn't bother to find out more about the company before their clients made digital and television ads for FTX. The only person... The only one he says did their due diligence was, do you want to guess, Sally? T. Swifty. It, it was Taylor Swift. That's right. Uh, he said, quote, the one person I found that did was Taylor Swift. In our discovery, Taylor Swift actually asked, can you tell me that these are not unregistered securities? She said it. Well, she's a doctor. She is Dr. Swift. In December of 2022, the Financial Times reported that Taylor and FTX were in negotiations for a $100 million deal involving ticketing and NFTs. The talks collapsed in November. One former FTX employee told the Financial Times that the company was looking for a, quote, light degree of endorsement from Taylor on social media. But another source insisted Taylor would not and did not agree to an endorsement deal. The discussion was around a potential tour sponsorship that didn't happen. Of course, uh, FTX filed for bankruptcy in November. The company's founder, Sam Bankman Freed, has pled not guilty to the fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and conspiracy 
to defraud the United States among a plethora of other charges. So who is Taylor Swift's like financial advisor? Because they had her fucking back. Yo, I think she's just I don't think she has anybody. I think Taylor Swift gets up every morning, 5 a.m., no doubt, and just starts going through all the shit she has to do from brushing her teeth to doing her taxes to telling FTX to fuck themselves <laughs> to having any boyfriend that she wants and then breaking their heart. Oh, God. Writing an album about it, making a bazillions of dollars and then throwing the biggest tour that collapsed Ticketmaster. That's what Taylor Swift does every day. You don't think she has an advisor or 70 of them? No, 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 no. Taylor Swift does yeah. all of this on her own. Oh, okay. She invented chat GPT yeah, okay. just to do this for her. <laughs> mark my words, friends. Mark, mark my words. <laughs> Swift. T GPT. Taylor Swift <laughs> is the new Chuck Norris. We're going to be making Chuck Norris jokes about T Swift. You heard it here first. God. Messed up my whole mic. <laughs> you heard it here first. She is the new Chuck Norris in life, not martial arts, in everything. <laughs> We're going to be like, you know, Taylor Swift for president. <laughs> Taylor Swift for Emperor of the Earth. I said, I said, I said for it. Earth President. I said what I said. Good for you, Taylor. That's nice to avoid a five billion dollar lawsuit. Yeah, for real. Well done. Because you know she's worth more than that. Maybe. How much is Taylor Swift worth? Oh, you could look it up. I don't think she's worth. I don't think she's worth five billion dollars. Maybe a billion. I don't even know if she's worth a billion. That's Rihanna's oh, she, shit. She's definitely worth a billion. You think? Yeah. I don't know. Ellie's looking it up. We're going to move on. $450 million. Yeah. Half a billion. Close. Give or take. Who is richer, Beyonce or Taylor Swift? <laughs> this is the first thing. I don't know. Who is Taylor it? Swift is estimated to be wealthier than Beyonce. Yeah, how about that? But they're pretty even. I was going to say, it's probably pretty nominal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you Broadway freaks, freaks of nature, love musicals. I'm going to twist it. I, I, I enjoy some of the soundtracks for some of these shows. Uh, this show, though, completely iconic. You guys, The Phantom of the Opera, Broadway's longest running show, ended with a final performance that received, of course, Standing ovations and champagne toasts. The performance included a reprise of the music of the night sung by the current cast and former actors, including original star Sarah Brightman, who was in attendance for that. Andrew Lloyd Webber dedicated the show to his son who passed away last month. The show was scheduled to close in February, but was pushed to mid-April due to, what do you think? Not COVID. I don't know. Why wouldn't you close a show when you when you wanted to? Money. It's because of the money. <laughs> That's right. They had a incredibly skyrocket high ticket sales. Uh, so, but they did. Uh, the the chandelier came down for the final time, and uh, they took their final bow out there. Uh, and now the crown for the longest running show goes to Chicago, hmm. which began back in 1996. Jesus. Uh huh. 35 years Phantom of the Opera has been out there doing his thing. Isn't that incredible? Well, if you didn't get your chance, uh, too there's, bad. No. There's still time because it's it's still actually playing in uh, in the UK. Uh, so you can go out there and see it. But it's not on Broadway at the Majestic Theater where it's been for many, 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 many years. So there you have it, you guys. That is the Jordy Files. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We miss you, Jordan. Where is she tonight? I know. She can't even watch us. She's having the time of her life. Truth be told, we, we had a... We went we went kayaking um, last weekend, and we both got sunburned. Like yeah, the, like, nobody, like, she gets sunburned and then swells up. Um, so, like, her poor lady, she was on her feet all day today and uh out in the sun again oh no um doing um does she wear sunscreen when she goes out and does all that yeah yeah amazingly it she's does like nothing. spf 150 <laughs> she though. needs to like 
like put a blanket over her, I think. <laughs> Acceptable in some regions of the world. Um But yeah, we miss you, Jordan. She's probably sleeping. Probably. Which is what we all should be doing right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, with that being said, uh why don't we uh, dive into Ellie's bad bitch message of the week. <laughs> a while since we've had bible study huh it has it has uh so i was actually thinking about this earlier today and uh it's one thing that i've noticed that everyone i meet struggles with and it's setting boundaries or like saying no is like one of the hardest things I know a lot of people in like my personal life, um, friends, family, whatever, like I see this happen and they just like let people into their life that don't need to be that involved or they just don't know how to say, no, I can't do this for you right now. Um, and it's it's something that I had to learn too, you know, being able to set those boundaries for yourself because you can only give so much of yourself away to other people before you start to have those effects. And it's so important to know what your personal limits are and what you're able to give out and what you're able to consume with the people around you as well. Um, You know, there's a lot of people with a lot of different personalities. And sometimes you can't handle all of that at the same time. And you don't have to. It's not a personality fault on either person, but you just have to set those limits and be like, I can't emotionally take this on right now. Um, And one of the things that I think is so awesome that I've learned becoming more self-aware of my own boundaries and what my needs are um, emotionally, physically, all those things, you know, just like I sometimes I have to physically be separated from everyone. I have to physically be alone or I have to emotionally be alone and communicating that to friends, family, all of that and them understanding and respecting those boundaries. And then there's some people that haven't respected those boundaries and those people are no longer in my life because they're like your boundaries have to be implemented and respected. It has to be both. And there's people that will try to set those boundaries and then people will overstep them and they're just they just back down. So you have to still uphold those boundaries. And then it's just you step into a completely different lifestyle and different mindset, a healthier mindset when you're standing solid in that and you don't tolerate anybody else to to come in and manipulate you or, you know, just make you feel uncomfortable in any way. And it's just it's hard to say no sometimes. I feel like growing up, we were kind of taught to just like turn the other cheek or, you know, to be not really submissive, but just cooperative. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, diplomatic. Diplomatic, yeah. And I've never been that way. I've always been very aggressive. I've been told I'm intimidating a lot. And I realized now that I'm older that it was just me standing up for myself and not tolerating any of these things that made me uncomfortable. Um, And I see people that constantly just put themselves in those positions where they don't have those boundaries and they just allow people to make them feel uncomfortable in their own space. And it's physically hurtful to them and their emotional well-being. Well, can I pick a back off of that? Just Absolutely. So, uh, well, I completely agree um, without question. 
Um, I think it. Uh, I think a, a problem also arises where these people that overstep the boundaries is because they know they can, and these are generally, I hate to say it, but people that are the closest to you, your family, your friends. So if it, you've already created this culture of well, they'll 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 never say no. I can always count on this person, and. Well, that may be true, and it may not be malicious in any way. Just I always know I can count on this person, so I'll always go to them. And the truth is, and we've talked about this before, sometimes sometimes you have to trim some people out of your life. Not necessarily cut them out, but sometimes you got to like put some people in time out. These people that completely take from you and and not to say that they don't give it back, when they're taking and everybody else is taking and there's things that you should be focusing on for yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to just say, I can't, I can't with you. Like you said, I can't, <laughs> I can't, you, you have to go away, you know, or you, or you, you're more silent about it. You just stop returning phone calls. You just stop answering the texts, the texts, you just put, you know, go on blackout and, uh, and that's okay. And the people that actually really care about you, They'll know immediately. Okay. The people that, that may love you, but don't understand, there'll be some friction, but they'll get it and not go away, you know, or, or you know, like not love you. Mm -hmm. But the people that are just taking because they know they can and have no desire about your well-being, they will make themselves known immediately. Um, so uh, to your point, if you you have to recognize that you only have so much to give and that if you're not giving yourself or recharging your batteries or making sure that all of your shit is good, then you're not going to, you, what, what do they say? You can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah. So you end up pouring or borrowing other people's energy to pour into somebody else's. You become this conduit and, and then, you know, you, you have nothing for yourself and and that's not what this is all about. Everybody should have a little bit of the pie, including you, the one that gives away all the time. So that was my pickleback. <laughs> yeah. Boundaries. I mean, and I've had I've had this conversation a lot with like my friends because people come to me for advice and whatever advice I can give, I try to give. I'm I'm not the best, but I try to be realistic and talk about the things that I've learned and I've experienced. And like I see it with people. I know of two very close friends that I have that struggle with this really hard. I'm not going to put them on blast, but like, it's like you guys have to have a backbone. Like you have to understand your worth and what your time is worth and what your effort is worth. And there's people that when you finally say, I'm sorry, I just can't today. And they don't respect that because then they get upset. That's not healthy. That's not a healthy relationship that you're cultivating with that person. No one should get upset. They can. I mean, they can feel some type of way, but they have to understand. They have to respect yeah, it's okay it. To, it's OK to question. It's OK yes. to say, well, why do you feel that? Why? Why the sudden change of heart? Right. And have a dialogue. But if you get angry, like I said, yeah, the true colors will come out. And. Like what I try to tell people is like because you don't want to is a valid reason to not do something. If you're just if you just don't want to go out and meet someone because they invited you out or there is an event happening and you just really don't want to go. You don't need an excuse. You don't need an answer for them. You just need to say I really don't feel like it so I'm not going or I'm not doing this you know it's like I don't have the mental capacity to help you move today I'm sorry you know like those are all valid reasons and the people that aren't going to understand that are also people that don't know how to set those boundaries for themselves so they don't understand what that that dynamic is about and also, they're not respecting you and what you need. So it's it's a lot of different factors that go into it. But if you're able to 
just tell someone like, hey, not feeling it today. Can't can't do this. Can't go out with you. Can't, um, you know, help you move. Can't help you do this. Like, I know I said I could or whatever. And if their response is take care of yourself, hope you're good, whatever, it's all good. Keep that relationship. Sure. I mean, it, it, the- if they get mad and angry and <laughs> say hurtful things like that's. A relationship that you got to step away from that you you just got to. And it could be family. It could be friends. It could be partners like those relationships suck because you don't want to lose them. But if that's not beneficial and they don't respect you in that way, it's not worth it. It all it all comes down to respect and love. Yeah. If somebody respects you and loves you and or whatever the case is. <clears throat> a mix of the both hopefully um right. you know uh it, it should just it's okay to question why are you feeling this way can i help you know what can i do yeah you know can i can i help you get in the mood to help me move like right but if it just turns immediately to you know you're a piece of shit and, and exactly you're a bad friend yeah it's it's not fair and i think a lot of people like i've personally gone through that where i've done that and that was the response i got so then I think I'm actually a piece of shit, you know, and then you start not upholding those boundaries anymore because then you're like, well, I don't want this person to be mad at me. So then you just regardless of how you feel, you give and you give and you give. And that's how you get into that situation where you're the they always say yes person, you know. Right, right. right. So. Yeah, I guess the takeaway Understand yourself, your needs, set your boundaries. Boundaries do not mean that you are being mean, that you don't care about that other person, that you don't care about anything. It's just you respect yourself and you respect the other person enough to communicate that of like, you know, don't just ghost them, but communicate what you need. And if they don't respect it, that's a them problem. You should still be good. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a self. It's not selfish. It's self aware. You yes. know, it's it, so. There's a major difference. It's it's not selfish. It's self care. It's being self aware. Um, Set and, your boundaries. Stick to them. Don't be a yes man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's a uh, and and be valid. that person for someone else too. You know, like respect other people's boundaries as well be a lot better if we did yeah um listen i think i'm gonna forego the the break here and uh just jump into shameless plugs maybe we get out of here a little bit early uh i know ellie she she did a clopen last night oh god i'm running on three hours of sleep bro yeah uh and i'm just i'm just running (laughs) (laughs) so uh we're gonna dive right into our shameless plugs Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I don't like, the truth is, the truth is, I got a, a lot of shit working on this computer. This poor computer. She, uh, she. You got, you got to get Steve the Bruce to give you some. I know. I need more. I need more memory machinery. or something. She's, uh, she's busy. She's real busy. <laughs> All right, uh, Ellie. Do you have any shameless plugs to uh, kick us off with? Uh, so. What holiday is coming up soon? Does anyone know? Oh, I know. I was actually going to bring this up. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I just, I, I forgot. <laughs> but, uh, but I did. So, Cinco de Mayo is coming up very, very soon. That's not the one I was thinking of. Oh. But, but, but carry on. Oh, were you thinking 420? Uh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, well, that is tomorrow, and I am off, so, you know. Yeah, be sure to leave your uh, your cookies out for Snoop Dogg yeah. and Martha Stewart. Um, But, yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yes, yeah, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo is coming up, uh, and I work at a Mexican restaurant, so... It's about to be a shit show. Uh, Tijuana Flats is actually going to be open until midnight on Cinco de Mayo. No way. And Cinco de Mayo is on a Friday. 
my God. Uh, they are doing some specials. It's going to be a blast. I'm going to be there literally all day. Um, but if you don't have plans for Cinco de Mayo, there's a place you can go. And we're open until midnight. <laughs> uh, so and they have beer there. We have beer. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be all hands on deck. So everyone's going to be there. Um, I'll definitely be there. I think I'm going to steal Jordan's giant pink sombrero. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, come check out Cinco de Mayo at Tijuana Flats. Uh, it is going to be Friday night. And uh, just be prepared. There's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be a wait if you want some tacos. Don't think you're going to just be in and out like it was crazy last year um it's gonna be even crazier this year but uh it'll be a good time nice and you can help the justin queso foundation by coming in oh that's right yes they're actually going to have um we're going to have limited edition cinco hot sauces really and hot sauce bottles that you can purchase yeah um so that's kind of fun we haven't seen it yet um we're having like specialty Cinco t-shirts so like it's gonna be fun nice fun time awesome very good any other yeah. shameless plugs uh no I think that's it all right <laughs> uh, it's on to me uh, most importantly thank you guys so much for tuning in with us tonight on YouTube Facebook and sure life radio uh, we're also uh, being simulcast or uh, in syndication on Nixus radio uh brand new partnership with nixus radio they'll be airing our shows mondays at 8 p.m uh so if you miss it on wednesdays and uh, uh you don't know where to find it uh look up nixus n-y-x-u-s radio and uh catch the show on uh, on monday nights 8 p.m <sighs> most importantly <laughs> uh, please subscribe to our youtube channel very important stuff share it with your friends and uh, like, follow, and share us on social media as well. Also, be able to uh, be sure to check out our official website at jnclive.tv. Loaded with fun content. And uh, now you can order all your JNC swag right from the website. Also, check out our sponsorship opportunities there as well. And buy me a new car. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsors and partners at Code Rum, Hop Life Brewing, The Sneaky Tiki in Downtown Stewart. The Drums and Rums podcast presented by our good friend Paul Robertson. He drops podcasts on Tuesdays and hosts his live streams on Thursdays traditionally. You can check it out wherever you listen to podcasts or at drumsandrums.com. The Bug Juice, Bug Repellent, and Skin Care Products. Chesser Custom Designs, Laser Etching and Engraving. Learn to Live Aboard.com, a wonderful blog about living on a sailboat. The Academy of MidFlorida.com. You can earn your MBA completely online. From this wonderful local school here in Florida. Mid Florida to be exact. Academy of Mid Florida.com. You can come and see my one man band show this week. I'll be performing at Manatee Island Bar and Grill in Fort Pierce at 5 30 p.m. Uh, hoping that the, the weather is uh, permitting. That would be nice. Uh, you can find all of my show dates at bradbrock.com. And for all your graphic design needs, you can check out bradbrockdesign.com. And if you dig what we do, become a patron, a patron, patron. That's a weird word when you're trying to read it and say it. Become a patron and uh, help support the show. You visit Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash JNC podcast. You can become a patron for only five bucks a month. You get a first look at exclusive content, behind the scenes footage and more. Uh, don't forget the Fort 20 Fest is this weekend at the Sunrise Sands Resort in Fort Pierce. That kicks off around 4 p.m. on Friday afternoon and goes on until Saturday night. Al Beltran, of course, our guest from last week, uh, puts on the best music festivals in the area, so don't miss this one. And, uh, of course, our season finale for season five of uh, JNC will be on May 17th, and uh, we'll be back about four weeks after that. So uh, we got a lot of great shows coming up in the meantime. So don't miss it. This has been my shameless plug.
Philip saying he's jonesing to get down this way soon. <laughs> Philip, please, please, sooner than later. Let me know if it's sooner than later. Uh, I do have a box of stuff to send you, uh, all kinds of swag. But if you're here in person, I'd rather just hand it to you <laughs> and have a have a drink with you. Uh, I do have the box. It's packed. I just suck at leaving the house at all. Uh, Jordan, she tasked me with a. Uh, she just got a new cell phone. She tasked me with uh, taking it. It's packaged, ready to go. All I have to do is take it to the post office. Haven't done it. Haven't done it. Haven't done it. I didn't even want to leave the house tonight, but I figured if I'm going to go see my nephew and his father honored, I probably should probably do that. <laughs> um, so that that's what the, that's what happened. Um, anyway, you guys, uh, ready to wrap it up, Ellie? Anything yeah. else to add? Uh, so you mentioned 420. So I have an, I have one more shameless plug. Okay. Because I'll probably uh, take a little visit over there. Um, but for any of my friends or the listeners that partake uh, in the holiday, that is 420. <laughs> uh, True Leaf, which is my favorite dispensary. I just think they're amazing. I think they're very up to date on everything that they have. Their selection's amazing. They have the most out of anyone that I've seen so far as far as like the products and the products are awesome. Um, but they have huge sales tomorrow. They have almost everything's 40% off and they have a bunch of other deals. So I'm definitely going to go and check them out. Uh, they have like gummies for $10. So it's like a dollar a gummy. Uh, they have flour for like 20 bucks for an eighth. Amazing. Yeah. What? Such a deal. Yeah. Such a deal. But nice. uh, yeah. Well, very good. And True Leaf has the highest discount percentage for veterans. Well, that seems like a win right there. Yeah. Excellent. So you as an Air Force veteran, how was it to see your nephew in the Air Force JROTC uh, get pinned. Yeah, it's so cute. And then Colby says, like, he's decided on the Air Force, which just tickles my little heart. Yeah, it's a great branch. Yeah. Why not? I can't wait to see him get through basic because I remember vividly me getting through basic. <laughs> I still have all of my pictures from my flight and basic and all that. And like those are core memories in my brain. <laughs> uh, so. It's going to be amazing to watch him go through that. Yeah. So like, you know, Steve's getting the same call that mom got. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, just the sobbing. And it's just like, no. Because <laughs> your first week there is fucking awful. <laughs> no, no doubt. I mean, yeah. After after that, like, it's fine. <laughs> they certainly don't ease you into it. No. Oh, no. <laughs> they, they throw you into it for sure. Oh, man. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, congratulations to all those cadets. Um, uh, they put in a lot of work. There were some there were some members of, of, of that that program that just won award after award after yeah. award tonight. Um, and I was just like <laughs> blown away by, by these kids aptitude, you know, and, uh, to, and it's crazy for those kids to be like doing that well academically. While also being in so involved in that after school program and like all the things that are included in that because it's intensive, like all the training and all the stuff that they do. Sure. Like those kids are putting in 100 hours a week. And it was really nice to see the community, um, at least the retired, uh, the retired yeah. military community and beyond, you know, um, the daughters of the American Revolution were out so there honoring these kids. There, like, um, there it was were super cool. There were a lot of these organizations that were putting up scholarships for some of these kids. So it was really nice uh, to see the community also rallying around these kids that are that are out there just doing the most. You know, yeah. um, so very proud of of our nephew, of course, but all of those kids um, yeah. that really put in the work. I was amazed at at how many were actually in that program. Uh, it was really heartwarming. Uh, it was nice to see my brother have to get up and go on stage and have a, a little bit of doting uh, on he him. He got the honor roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came back to the chair and was like, oh, you finally made the honor roll. Uh, all right, you guys. We're going to let you go a little bit early. 
Hope you hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you learned a little something about our local music scene here and some of the struggles that go along with it. Um, where, where you know it's it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, but uh, but it is a big deal to the people that enjoy music, that perform the music, and the businesses that rely on it uh, to continue to be profitable. And uh, and it, it's symbiotic. If those businesses fail, we have nowhere to play. The whole culture We're busking on the street, you know. The whole culture of the Treasure Coast revolves around music sure does and and just artists in general so like if you're not supporting local artists why are you here yeah. because that is that is what we have like that is it it's here restaurants so service workers and artists like yep support them yes absolutely 100 percent. thank you so much for uh joining us live tonight uh let's hear once again for ellie yay me Hopefully we'll have the rest of the destruction crew back next week. And we'll see all of you next week. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And remember, it's okay to have some boundaries and uh, and set those boundaries for yourself and, uh, and, and make sure that the people that respect those boundaries, uh, you keep them close and uh, you take care of them when you can. Uh, broadcasting live from the legendary JNC Lounge, which is where we are right now. I'm Brad Brock. We love you guys. Good night. Oh, 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 I'm